Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to the final episode in our top picks for 2018. So as you've seen through the first two parts, parts two and three, uh, I had the wonderful opportunity to hang out with Steve Kilo of Rock Fantasy and Nick Franco to take a look uh, not only at their top picks of the year, but also run down my top 30. So what you've seen already is my number 21 through 30, as well as 11 through 20. So if you haven't seen those episodes, I urge you to go back, check them out. They're a lot of fun. I am going to recap my top 30. I've actually got a top 60 all laid out for the year, but you're going to have to see the full list, as well as the rest of the list from the rest of the staff at Sea Tranquility on our website at www.seatranquility.org. That should be posted later this week or over the weekend, so you can see everybody's top picks of the year, uh, from albums to live albums to live concerts to reissues and all that fun stuff. So make sure you go check out those uh, full-blown final lists. So let's recap my top 30, okay? Coming in at number 30, Michael Schenker Fest Resurrection. Number 29, Glass Hammer's Chronomenot. Number 28, Riot Horse Cold Hearted Woman. Number 28, I'm sorry, number 27, Greta Von Fleet Anthem of the Peaceful Army. Number 26, Joe Bonamassa's Redemption. Number 25, The Golden Grass, Absolutely. Number 24, Tremonti's A Dying Machine, great concept album. Number 23, The Mighty Saxon Thunderbolt. Number 22, Riverside's Wasteland. Number 21, The Vintage Caravan, Gateways. Number 20, Griffin, Reinvention. <clears throat> Number 19, Redemption, Long Night's Journey into Day. Number 18, Pale Divine, Self-Titled. Number 17, Soft Machines, Hidden Details, great return for that classic band. Number 16, Michael Romeo of Symphony X, his solo album, War of the Worlds, Part 1. Number 15, Tomorrow's Eve, Mirror Creation, Part 3, Project Icarus. Number 14, Seventh Wonder, Tiara. Man, was it a great year for progressive metal, huh? Number 13, Haken, Vector. Another great progressive metal band and album. Number 12, Spock's Beard, Noise Floor. Number 11, Primordial, Exile Amongst the Ruins. So drum roll, please, as we count down my top 10 of the year. So coming in at number 10. I think my favorite album from these guys in a number of years and just an addicting album from start to finish. Some great riffs on it. It's progressive. It's heavy. It's thrashy. It's slightly a little bit of punk in spots, but mostly that's just the way this band uh, plays and writes their songs. I'm talking about The Wake by Voivod. Fantastic, fantastic album. Can't get enough of it. You haven't listened to Voivod since their early days and kind of maybe forgot about them since Piggy passed away. Easily their best album since uh, we've lost Piggy. Great, great stuff. Coming in at number nine. This is another one of those albums that just gets better with every listen. And I think if, you, if I were to give myself another month, I'd probably place this a little higher. Cruel Magic from new wave of British heavy metal legend Satan, who have been on quite a roll since they've reunited back a few years ago. They released a, a handful of great albums since their reunion. This is no exception. There's the guys right there. Unbelievable stuff. Galloping rhythms. Heavy arrangements. Blistering twin guitars. Great vocals. It's just a dynamite, dynamite album that is vying for position it in one of my as one of my favorite uh, Satan albums of all time. It's just really great stuff. Coming in at number eight, again an album that just kind of came out and I think took the world by the metal world by storm. It's the Sciences by Sleep, Doom slash Stoner metal legends. This is a behemothly heavy. Is that even a term? Behemothly heavy. I've said it. Uh, crushing album. Just, I tell you, psychedelic doom and stoner doesn't get much better than this. So heavy, so much fuzz and distortion, and the tunes just rock, headbanging music for, for everybody who likes kind of that down tune, crushing, doomy stuff, man. Awesome. Great return to form from sleep. Next up, more progressive slash power metal. Uh, these guys can do no wrong, man. I tell you, you talk about bands who just never disappoint. How about Camelot? The Shadow Theory. What an amazing album this is. I mean, this gets just so majestic and just beautiful and gorgeous, but it's heavy. It's it's intricate in spots. It's just, you know, the keyboards and the guitars and the off-the-charts vocals. Man, just an awesome, awesome album that I really, really like a lot. And, uh, you know, arguably one of the best of the kind of prog metal bands out there, I think. Great album. 
coming in at number, where are we, number six. This, this came out right at the beginning of the year, right at the beginning of the year, and I've been listening to it all year long, and I wanted to make sure I didn't forget about it come the end of the year. You know, so much good stuff comes out. No Cross, No Crown by Corrosion of Conformity. This album just kicks ass. Tons of groove and heavy, fat riffs. Uh, it's raunchy. It's, it's crushing, man. I love it. One of my favorite COC albums in quite a long time. It's nice to see like that core classic COC lineup back in business again, you know. Coming in at number five. This one's been flo also been out for quite a while. This has been floating in my top five all year long. I knew it was going to finish up that way. Queen of Time by Amorphous. You'll notice my buddies uh, Nick Franco and Steve Keeler put the this album at the top of their list for the year. It, it, it was a contender for a while, but man, some stuff came out later in the year that just kind of knocked it aside a little bit. But yeah, this is just a great album from another band that's just on a complete roll. Uh, you know, since uh, Tommy has joined them as a lead singer, God, how many years ago? Eight, nine, ten years ago. Every album they put out with him has just been amazing. They keep getting better and better. Um, just a fantastic album. Great mix of like progressive metal and death metal and folk metal, prog rock. They do a little bit of everything. Wonderful stuff. Here's an album that when I heard, the first couple times I heard, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I kept saying, yeah, you know what? It's their sophomore release. I like the debut a little better, but I still like this. And the more I listen to it, the more I listen to it, the more I listen to it, the more I loved it. And now I'm like, man, I like this better than the debut. Excuse me, the debut. And I just think the hooks on this are great. The riffs are great. The songs are just, it's just classic, like hard and heavy rock and roll, proto-metal, doom, whatever you want to call it. They do a little bit of everything. Lucifer, Lucifer 2. I tell you, man, probably easily my favorite, like, female-fronted hard rock album this year. Addicting, beyond belief. There, there was a time before these next couple came out that I thought this might actually finish at my number one of the year. That's how much I love it. But you know how things happen. We love stuff, and then something else comes out that we like even more. Uh, this one is from a band who just... I love them so much. I have for most of my life. And it's just amazing to me at how long they've been in business, 50 years just about. And they just keep cranking out new albums that just sound fresh and stand up there with some of the best they've ever done. I'm talking about Britain's Uriah Heap, Living the Dream. Great stuff, folks. Man, if you if you gave up on Uriah Heap after, you know, they kicked out Byron or maybe, you know, kicked out John Lawton way back in the day. You need to go back and listen to these albums they put out over the last like four studio albums have been killer, and this lineup of the band has been to you know Bernie Shaw has been singing for this band since the you know 1986. It's like he is the sound of the band now, man. And I tell you, these albums, this album is a great album, and you know Grazed by Heaven, one of the great kickoff tracks of any album released this year, and just the great stuff top to bottom. A great bunch of guys. They're so nice. And their music just rocks. Raging Hammond, Oregon, killer guitar, great vocals, memorable songs. What more do you need? What's up, Tala? Tala's winding her way around here. All right, coming in at number two. Uh, my one and my one number two have been kind of jockeying for position for the last couple of weeks. And uh, I think if you guys have been watching these end-of-year shows for the last couple of years, you know I tend to go with, as my top pick, the album that just kind of found its way into my various stereo systems the most, the, the, the album that I listened to the most, where it just really spoke to me. There may be technically better albums, but it's just, it's the one that I played the most, the one that I enjoyed the most, and, and has had the longest lasting power. Both of these were in that position all year long. In the end, I gave the edge to one of them, which it probably goes a little bit against traditionally what I would do when it comes to the style of music, but it's just... It's just the way it worked out, right? So coming at number two for me this year is Firepower by Judas Priest. Another great, great album from these guys so late in their career. You know, if you'll remember, Redeemer of Souls was my favorite release uh, when that came out. Was that 2015, I believe it was? And this one was destined for that slot. It's just got ridiculously memorable songs. It's heavy as hell. The production's awesome. The playing is great. And uh, they, they play like a whole handful of these on tour this year, and it was just great to hear them. I think got some future Priest classics on here. It's just a great, great album that I think in any other year would have been my top pick of the year. But, you know, when it all comes down to it, this album, 
which is basically the lone black metal album that made it to my list this year. I don't know how that happened, but uh, that is the case. And this is an, an instance of a band who lost a key member, but then an original key member kind of came back into the fold to sing and play guitar, and they did not lose a step at all and probably have really it put put together their most kick-ass album in years. I'm talking about Northern Chaos Gods by Immortal. I just can't, still to this day, cannot get enough of this album. This is, it's bruising, crushing black metal at its best. But man, the riffs are so accessible. The songs are so anthemic. You know, the title track, Into Battle Ride. Uh, what else? Grim and Dark, Called to Ice. Where Mountains Rise, probably my favorite song on the album. Well, <laughs> Mighty Raven Dark is another one. It's just one song after another. Demon Oz's riffs are just off the charts, just brutal and crushing, man. Uh, but it's just, every song is so memorable. Like, you know, if you can pick out a black metal album that is just anthemic, this is it. Okay? Not to disparage any immortal album that came before it, because I love them all. But, man, this just knocked me on my ass this year and just would not let go of me. So that's my number one album of the year. So again, just to recap, number 10, Voivod's The Wake. Number nine, Satan's Cruel Magic. Number eight, Sleep, The Sciences. Number seven, Camelot, The Shadow Theory. Number six, Corrosion, Conformity, No Cross, No Crown. Number five, Amorphous, Queen of Time. Number four, Lucifer, Lucifer 2. Number three, Uriah Heap's Living the Dream. Number two, Judas Priest, Firepower. And number one, Immortal, Northern, Chaos, God. So that's it, guys. That wraps up 2018. I've already got stuff in my to-do list uh, for January and February releases that, you know, of course, we get lots of those um, digital promos, right? So we get the, we get the, uh, the stream and the, the uh, downloads for stuff that still come in, still has yet to come out. We're looking a month or two away, so that stuff is already piling up. So I'm sure 2019 will kick off with a blast, but it has been a great pleasure bringing you guys all sorts of content this year. I want to thank each and every one of you who have been religiously watching uh, the Sea of Tranquility YouTube show here. And, you know, we've done a lot this year. Um, I will tell you, you know, the, the show has been on the air for just over four years now. It took me practically four years to get to a thousand subscribers. And once I did, it just completely blew up since then. So now we're just, uh, I think, 10, 10 subscribers shy of 4,000. So if you have not subscribed, please do. Just click that button. You'll get uh, emails every time we post something new. And the more subscribers I have, you know, hopefully the better I do with, uh, you know, the YouTube powers that be. And I just want to reach more people. That's what it's all about. So whether you come here for my new product shows, which is what we were originally based on, to the top 10 songs, to deep cuts on classic albums, to our great history of shows, questions and answers, which I love doing. You guys seem to like listening to uh, The Listening Room, interviews with bands and musicians and local cats and, uh, you know, the occasional uh, movie and film reviews and all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to do as much different stuff because I know everybody likes different things. So uh, I'm happy to hear all the great feedback. I couldn't have done it without all of you. So here's to a great 2019. It's been a pleasure this year. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I, I've still got some more stuff I'm going to pump out between now and the end of the year. Uh, I've got a bunch of top 10 songs coming up for all sorts of cool bands. I think I'm going to squeeze in a, a, a history of or two. We're, we're definitely shooting the Jews Priest one next week. I think I'm going to be able to squeeze in a Grand Funk Railroad this week as well, but I got a lot of top 10 stuff coming up, maybe a couple rants too as well. So uh, stay tuned for all that. Once again, thanks again. Happy holidays, everybody, and we'll see you real soon.